Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Kerbal Space Program. Your host for today, HOC Gaming. We have got Smooth Jazz brought in especially just for you to listen to, as a representative background music to this video. Because of course, this was recorded on a live stream several weeks ago actually. This is very old footage. And in today's video, we shall be going to the moon and back, entirely in EVA. Or IVA, cuh! EVA, that would be much more impressive. Damn, why didn't I do that? I did, I did the wrong video. I should have, ah, oh, fuck. Damn it. Ah, well, I don't know how exactly that would be possible, but whatever. Oh, uh, whatever. IVA will have to do. So, we build ourselves a craft to the sound of beautiful jazz. Smooth jazz, and even smoother commentary. Yes, a variety of jazz music playing, including Baker Cat, which I'm actually not going to be put, putting in the video, so I have to edit it out. Oh well. Yes, we build ourselves a ship. That's not really important. What is important is the flying of this ship. You can just look at this, and if you're fairly experienced at playing the game, you know that this can go to the moon. That's not a problem. And if you're not experienced at playing the game, then look at this and memorize it, because this can go to the moon. So, getting into our command pod, we look around and inspect the place that will be our home for the next roughly 20 minutes. What time is it now? It's roughly, uh, roughly 18 minutes, actually. Okay, so the flag out there looking dawdling at us, and the ground below our feet suddenly starts descending away from us. Or are we going up? Hmm, interesting question. Relative to, relative to our craft, the ground is descending away from us. A bit scary when you think about it. So flying this up and just generally getting in the mood with some beautiful smooth jazz. Oh yes. We eventually get up to what seems to be 10 kilometers based on our altimeter, start doing our gravity turn over to... That's what, 30? 30 degrees over? No, oh, yeah, that's 45 there, so this is like 22.5 degrees. And because I have played KSP for quite a while, a lot of this is second nature, even from within the command pod. So, now raised up to... I'm not entirely sure what the altitude was there. I think it's nearly... Well, okay, let me think. We're at... Almost, almost 70 degrees over, would you say? No, almost uh, 50, 60 degrees over. So we're probably... Oh yes, we are nearly 50 kilometers up. In fact, we'll be 50 kilometers up right about now. There we go, 50 kilometers up. We've jettisoned eight stage, and nothing seems to have exploded yet, so that's going well. And we're now burning at roughly 60 degrees tilt, which seems about right. Although I think with 1.3 kilometers per second, we're probably... Our apparatus must be fairly high by now. So I think we'll cut the engine, and we probably are in a position to coast up to our apparatus. So we do that, and it does in fact take us quite high up. Of course, being inside IVA, you don't have the perspective of map view, so we aren't quite as efficient as maybe we could have been otherwise. That altimeter tells us that we're rising up and we're just about to pass 100 kilometers. 100 kilometers. Oh, there it goes. Oh, the needle, will it make it, will it make it? Well, we start burning at any rate, and we get ourselves, hopefully, into an orbit. Yeah, we're currently 1.100 kilometers up, 110, 112 nearly kilometers up. And everything's going okay, we're burning directly prograde. Our orbital velocity is 1.25 meters, or kilometers per second. And at 100 kilometers, you need Ah, uh, you probably need something in the region of 2 kilometers per second to orbit, maybe 2.2. .2. So we'll probably probably be raising our speed up to about that. We are indeed falling back down now. Falling rather fast according to that dial, so we're going to tilt ourselves just above the horizon to try and counter for that. Needle continues to fall down. Quite worrying, really. I hope I check the speed soon. Where is it? Come on, speed. There we go, 1.7. Okay, so we carry on burning. We carry on burning till about 2.27 meters per second. And it seems like that is an orbit. Now, I did this with the help of a mod. I will admit, I did this using Telemachus. Now, the reason for that was so that I could get information as to my apoapsis and periapsis. I've been making out like I was justifying, you know, like I was judging everything myself, when in reality I was actually getting fed numbers. 
Now you may think, but this is easy then. This mission means nothing if you had those numbers. This is way too easy. Well, I'd like to point out that I have done this mission before without Telemachus. I think it's on my channel somewhere. Point being that I, this was mainly a test, actually. And in fact, this video wasn't going to be uploaded for another couple of weeks. I just felt that I should really push it out now, before it gets too old. Yes, Telemachus is not being used to make the moon mission easier. It's being used to make interplanetary missions easier. Because that's right, we'll be going out to Juna, or to Eve, or perhaps to Paul, or perhaps to Elu. We'll be going out to all sorts of different planets using IVA View. We'll be building space stations. We'll be building massive tanks and drive. Okay, we might not be building tanks, but we will be building big things using entirely IVA and EVA. No map view, no external view. Now, there are a few problems with that, as in that we do have to actually occasionally use external view for things like actually leaving the ship, for things like actually... Is that it? Yeah, no, to go on EVA you have to be outside the... you have to be outside IVA in order to go on EVA. Which is a bit disappointing, you'd think it'd be nice if you could look up at the hatch and you could click it and press I EVA or something. Unfortunately you can't. So yes, it will just be primarily IVA and EVA, but we should be able to get so much done! And this video is a bit of a teaser because the second episode of this series, which it will be a series, series, will be happening after career mode. So when career mode finishes, which should be hopefully quite soon, we will move on to doing an IVA based series alongside our Space Tourism series 2. Anyway, back to the video. We've managed to burn out, increase our orbital velocity up to perform a Hoffman transfer and to get an encounter with the moon. Now we're looking down at it in all its barren, rocky wasteland glory and ever so slowly falling down towards it. I say slowly, that's pretty fast. Oh dear. Think how big that is! It's fractal, so when you look up at it from this height it doesn't seem very big, but that's an entire moon! Walking round the moon would take something in the region of like a month of walking, apparently. I'm, I'm not sure if that's correct, but it's a long time, okay? A long time. Right, we have 763 meters per second and increasing as we fall down towards the surface. We need to find our retrograde marker. Now the idea, according to Telemachus, is that our periapsis is just about 5 kilometers off the surface. So we ought to be about 5 kilometers up and we're currently uh, we're currently 30 kilometers up and falling. So when we hit 5 kilometers we ought to be able to burn retrograde and get an efficient, an efficient uh, deorbit. However, five kilometers, ooh, five kilometers is cutting it a bit close. There are mountains on the moon which are seven kilometers high. So we're gonna have to be quite lucky in order to get this to work. But before we do that, we successfully get into an orbit, because of course this is not any regular mission, this is supposed to be a near Apollo mission. So, having pointed north and then detached from our stage, Yes, we are carrying a command module, uh, a, yeah, we're technically a command module stage, and now we are in a lander stage. And we are pointing, and if we just detach and then rotate away, we can see our craft there. Oh, that's beautiful. That is beautiful. Now, I should have used, I should have set up my key bindings, my action groups in order to undock manually from within IVA. Unfortunately, I forgot to, so I did end up having to go outside the craft in order to undock from the node. So again, another reason why occasionally we may have to go outside. But all the piloting is done from within, which I think is really the most important part. All the piloting is done from within. And in fact, we may even be getting a mod to help us instead of using Telemachus. Uh, it's a mod which gives you, like, camera, docking port, screens, and orbital information and stuff within IVA. And it might come with functionality like EVA, who knows. If it does, then I will definitely be using it. Anyway, we do a slight burn to just get us away from our craft, and our fuel has run out. Oh no, we're out of fuel! How's this happened? Well, it turns out... I was connected to my stage using a docking port rather than a decoupler, and of course fuel can flow through docking ports, so the fuel prioritised that which was contained within our lander and used all of it up first before burning its own supply. 
Well, we tilt back up, we turn around, we can see our craft just outside the window there. We're going to have to redock. Now, of course, the idea was that we were going to do this anyway. We're going to land and then come back and then dock. But we can do it now as a test, I suppose. And because we can't be outside, this is going to be a very interesting docking. We get closer using our RCS propellants. We have plenty of fuel there. Manage to bring ourselves just in front of it. And as we try and align with the docking port for the second time, after jettisoning from it the first time, uh, we should be able to tilt down. Unfortunately... Oh, nice music. Oh yeah. Sorry, I keep on getting distracted by the jazz. Unfortunately, the docking port is above us. Look up, crane your head up. If you're wearing Oculus Rift, you'd see the top of the command module. Well, you wouldn't because this is a video, but I would have seen the top of the command module. So our docking port, we have to actually tilt down and look at the moon in order to get them aligned. Luckily, we have markers on the nav board to help us out. So, we can see the pink one is our orientation with respect to where the craft is. So now we're pointing directly at it. Retrograde marker is our velocity, and there is our prograde marker. So we're heading straight towards it, by all accounts. And in fact, after just a few moments, we dock. And there it is. Ladies and gentlemen, we have successfully performed an IVA docking, entirely in IVA. Unfortunately, it's messed up our target velocity marker there, but oh well. For the second time, having undocked after having transferred fuel, again, another thing we have to do outside the craft, because we can't transfer fuel from within, and transferring is a mechanic that we can't go without, sadly. So yes, we have to do some things outside. As long as we pilot within, it should be okay, as I've said. Anyway, start burning away. Goodbye, our craft. We won't be seeing you again, even though it was the plan to do so. We burn up, we burn away. We're now burning retrograde, because I think it's about time we land. So, our orbital, our velocity marker up there has been screwed up, which means that we're going to have to do a bit more of a manual landing than we may have otherwise expected. Jebediah waving his hands there, in excitement perhaps. And in just a few moments, I think we'll be warping around until we get daylight. Here we go, so one quick editing maneuver next, and we see the bright side of the moon. You know the dark side? There's also the bright side. Yeah, that's what it's called. And there it is, we're skimming over the mountaintops. Oddly enough, it's quite disorienting. Or disorientating because it's right directly above us. And remember those seven kilometer mountains I was talking about? Oh, we'd have to be quite unlucky to hit one of those, wouldn't we? Oh dear. Harvey starts burning upwards, racing, desperately hoping. He can feel his heart pounding in his chest. Oh, we can see the rocks out of the window. Don't burn retrograde, just burn straight up, Jeb. Come on. We do not want to hit the mountains. We do not want to hit the mountains. We do not want to hit the mountains. I can see the ground. I can see the rocks were that close. We do not want to hit the mountains. Okay. Okay. Breathe. <sighs> Just breathe. We appear to have put off death for another day. In fact, we did it a bit much. We, had a, we actually ended up going a significant distance up back into the air. Pogoing, as I believe it's called. But anyway, eventually we cancel out our velocity. We start falling straight down, and then we burn towards our retrograde marker. And in just a few moments, after burning straight down, you can see the texture on the ground. We are coming in for a landing. Our vertical velocity is minus 2 meters per second, now minus 5. And we carry on burning ever so slightly. Bring, bring it down. We're about 10 meters off the surface. Oh, our vertical velocity. Oh, drop! And a bit of a burn, and they land. Very smooth. Smooth jazz, smooth landing, smooth commentary. And now we're out on the surface of the moon. And, of course, we need to go outside the craft in order to EVA, but I carefully cut this from the video footage so your immersion is not ruined. Jebediah Kerman, one small step for Kerbals, despite the fact that they are so tiny. And he steps out onto the surface of the moon, uh, with the sun lighting up the lander from the back. It's quite a nice lander. I'd forgotten how nice it is. Of course, when you're in the IVA view, you never quite get to appreciate what your craft actually looks like. Planting a flag, look at that beautiful thumbnail. The United Kingdom. No, not really, it's called the, Un the Union Jeb. The Union Jeb. Intravehicular activities. Intravehicular is, stand, is what IVA stands for, int intravehicular activities, but I don't know whether that's the best name for a series. I need to name this something. 
Ivza. Okay, Ivza. All the way here in IVA view, exclamation mark. Mostly. In brackets. Now it's time to get back. Will we be able to do it? Well, yes and no. I mean, the idea, the idea behind this landing was that we'd look at the horizon and we'd rendezvous with our craft that was up there in orbit. We'd do a proper Apollo mission. Unfortunately, after a lot of waiting and listening to a lot more jazz, we can't see the marker for some inexplicable reason. Except the fact that there is quite a sophisticated, no, quite a simple explanation, not sophisticated at all. Markers are considered as part of the UI. And when you hide the heads-up display by pressing F2 on your keyboard, you hide the UI. Which means that we couldn't see the marker because we were in cinematic mode. Facepalm. Just facepalm myself. Uh, we get higher, still using cinematic mode. Or is that IVA because IVA doesn't have a UI? Oh yeah, so we might actually, we might actually, if we're lucky, catch a glimpse. And there it is! There's the diamond marker that we were looking for. And we never saw it, which means we just do not have enough fuel now. We are not in the position to rendezvous with it. I'm so sorry, but I wish we were. We just couldn't do it. Ah, it's a shame, I know. But, oh well. We're now... All that remains to do is to bring ourselves back home, which is what we shall proceed to do. So, burning up, we escape from the moon, and looking down, I think that's Earth there, isn't it? The navball should switch momentarily. Look at the navball, look at the navball, it should do a flip. There it is, there's the flip. And that is the sign that we're in the sphere of influence of Kerbin. So, there's Kerbin. And according to Telemachus, our periapsis is about 20 kilometers or so, so we should be fine just to time warp down. Look at the beautiful planet welling out of the blackness. Three kilometers per second as we start hitting the atmosphere. Turn this thing around just to get a better view. Ooh, yes. Now just to land. Hopefully we land on land because otherwise we may have to end up doing some manual burning. Although actually I think we have two parachutes on our uh, command pod, so we may not have to do anything. Anyway, we're within the atmosphere, the atmospheric marker, which is placed all over the place. There's loads of atmospheric markers, seriously. Too many. They start creeping up the scales and our altitude is falling very fast. Our ship starts turning around due to the aerodynamics. And I believe at some point we might actually get a glimpse of us detaching the command module. Or the lander module even, the lander. Ah, there's the planet. You can just start seeing the flickers of flame and then it starts burning up in the atmosphere. The ablative shielding starts peeling away, or at least it would if we had any. We've got no shielding. Poof! Dead. No, this is not a deadly re-entry. No, this is just vanilla KSB where you can survive pretty much any re-entry. Oh, that'll be interesting. And there we go, there it goes, there it goes, the lander just disappears. The flames disappear at least, and there it is. We've managed to get a glimpse of it before the aerodynamics start dragging us around the other, day, the other way. Oh yes, an IVA mode, uh, an IVA mode series with deadly re-entry. That would be hell. So I'm not going to do it because I want to see how far I can get in stock case KSP using IVA without using any mods. Unless it's an IVA changing mod, you know, something specific that gives us more information, perhaps. But there we go, that's pretty much it. We're back on Kerbin, we're falling down. I believe we have just opened the parachutes, and we are just about to land. Our vertical velocity is about 4 meters per second, bringing it down now. You can just see the textures rising up to meet us. And... Ker...thunk. Oh, quite a nice landing. And that was it. Ladies and gentlemen, we start rolling down the hill, but it doesn't matter because we have successfully gone all the way to the moon and back in IVA view. We've successfully done a docking and we've successfully proved that there is at least, at least some potential for videos in the future going into planetary with IVA. Building space stations, building tanks. No, no tanks. Okay, maybe. It depends. Maybe. Also, I believe we just saw various pieces of our craft disintegrating then, but it doesn't matter. Thank you very much for watching this episode of a new series. I hope you are excited as I am. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.